On March 28, 2014, I was in a severe car accident that left me with no feeling or movement in my right leg. We just hit black ice and the car went rolling. I was ejected 20 or more feet from my car before it rolled, so I'm lucky that the car didn't roll on me. At the scene of the accident, I actually tried to get up and walk and they had to hold me down and make sure I wouldn't move. I was first admitted to the hospital in Gillette, Wyoming for my initial surgeries. It was extreme. She had lots of uh, damage. damage. She was broken. One of the doctors showed me her x-ray on, on the computer. She looked like puzzle pieces laying on a table that needed to put back together. The severity of my trauma, our hospital wasn't sure if they'd be able to handle me. They were just looking for the right place um, and the place that would accept her and thankfully it was here. They said, you're going the best place you could go. This is where you need to be. I actually got a notification that we were getting a, a trauma transfer from a rural Wyoming hospital and that they were coming by air. I looked at the list of injuries and thought, wow. When she arrived here, she had severe injuries and required a, a very aggressive stabilization and was going to need more surgery here. She had a small bleed within her brain. She had mechanical ventilation supporting you know, her breathing for her. She had multiple rib fractures. She had a collapsed lung. Her liver had a laceration. Both kidneys were injured. Her spleen was injured. Her pelvis was, as a bony structure, was completely unstable. When her pelvis broke, this entire uh, half of her pelvis, including this is her hip socket where her thigh bone would have been, separated out an inch to an inch and a half away from her spine uh, in the accident. And this is one of the worst pelvis fractures that I have ever seen. You know, this is an injury pattern that has a high, high risk of death. The first few hours, are they were incredibly critical and it required a breadth of disciplines and support staff to get her where she needed to be. I don't remember really much of waking up. I just remember <laughs> all of a sudden just seeing tubes and the TV and just my mom and the hospital bed and nurses. You know, I was scared. And so her mom and I are both at bedside and we're talking to her, you know, and said you were in a bad accident. You're in Denver now, but your family's here. My one leg didn't move, my right leg, so that was pretty scary to me. I get sad about my leg not waking up. That's that's the hardest thing for me. It hasn't woken up yet. They think it will, at least to my knee. Anything beyond that will be a bonus, so. As she went through multiple operations every couple days, she got to the point where we were actually able to remove the breathing tube, and when she was able to talk, you know, a lot of her discussion was, well, how do I get to the next point? You know, what's the next step? How, when am I gonna start walking? And what can I do to help you get to where I can move? And so the entire course, you know, she was like that. Devin, from the moment she sort of woke up from her sedation and things like that, was determined to do well. She understood that it was a bad injury. She knew she couldn't move her leg, but I don't think I ever went in her room where she didn't have a smile on her face, whether she was hurting, whether she was working hard with physical therapy. Um, I think that the, the first thing I think of when I, when I hear Devin's name is her smile. Um, and I think she's gonna do well because of that. When I think of a Devin, I have to, the thing that comes to my mind first was when I saw her in clinic in follow-up and her mother had her phone and she showed me a video on her phone of when Devin took her first steps in the rehab unit back home and it brings to mind that I think Devin is one of the bravest most courageous people I've ever met. When um, Dev took her first steps with her brace it was surreal. Just like when she was a baby and she took her first steps. That's almost the same experience again. She's a courageous young lady. She is, wow. <laughs> to get through what she's gone through and come out positive, amazing. It's a pretty inspiring story. You know, you always 
know you love your children and your family and you, you know it. Um, but when you're tested like that, oh man, you don't realize how much you appreciate the fact that you have them here to love. So. They fought for her and they, they worked hard to keep her here. Words truly can express the gratitude, the depth that we feel. I, looking at myself, I wouldn't say that I'm amazing, but if it wasn't for all the doctors and the nurses and the response teams, I don't think I would still be here. They keep me going because they saved me, so I shouldn't give up now with how hard they worked for me. Every time someone asks me, I'm saying, oh, I'm gonna walk again. Like, I don't care what anyone says, I will find a way to walk again.